Hi guys, welcome to our channel. In this video, we'll discuss about interlocking bricks versus red bricks. Recently, we made a video on interlocking bricks, and many of our viewers are asking about what are the differences between interlocking bricks and red bricks. So that's why we are making a separate video on this. After watching the entire video, if you have any doubts, please comment below. We will reply you within 24 hours. If you want to save money, choose the material wisely. So don't skip the video. Let me introduce myself. My name is Vinay. And if you are visiting my channel for the first time, don't forget to subscribe my channel. Also, click the bell icon. Let's start a video. So before going directly to the differences, first we have to know what is definition. These are type of block used to build walls, pavements and other materials in the masonry construction. Also, what are the interlocking bricks? These interlocking bricks are enhanced from the conventional clay bricks. So each brick is constructively designed to lock itself to the other bricks. So this is the mechanism. First we discuss about strength of interlocking bricks. Study represents the laboratory investigation on the properties of interlocking compressed earth bricks that is IZEB units. Compressive strength which is one of the most important properties in mass and reconstructions is used to determine mass and performance. So the public works department recommends the value of 2.8 Newton per mm square for non load bearing block and 5.2 Newton per mm square for load bearing block and these are sourced from researchgate.net and the red bricks these vary from 2.5 to 3.5 newton per mm square next we talk about standard size interlock bricks has full blocks and half blocks and these full blocks varies from 300 by 125 to 150 mm in breadth and 100 mm in depth for all standard walls these are used for walls and these half blocks which are molded to size or made by cutting these full blocks okay these full blocks are cutted to become 150 by 125 to 150 mm in breadth and 100 mm in depth and next red bricks in india standard size of the brick is 190 mm by 90 mm by 90 mm as per the recommendations of bureau of indian standards with the motor thickness the dimension of the block or brick becomes 200 mm by 100 mm by 100 mm which is also known as nominal size of the modular brick okay next we talk about manufacturing interlocking bricks are manufactured by mixing and compressing sand soil and cement in a machine it can be also be made from stone dust and cement these bricks are then stacked and cured this cement sets and bond with the sand to stabilize the brick next red bricks the process of manufacturing of bricks from the clay involves preparation of clay, molding and then drying and burning of the bricks. Next, how to work with these bricks? Interlocking blocks are different from conventional bricks since they do not require mortar to be laid during the brick laying work. So because of this characteristic, the process of building walls is faster and requires less labor to the construction. Okay, and next red bricks. These are laid by placing motor on four sides of the block and placing one by one. So this takes more time. So that's why interlocking bricks are more faster and requires less skill labor. Plastering. One of the most amazing advantages of interlocking bricks is that they have shiny outer surfaces. So these do not require cement plastering. So we can directly apply putty and paint it off. It helps reduce the cost of the construction of the walls up to 30% to 40%. In case of brick masonry, the thickness of first coat plaster is in general 12 mm and putty is applied over it and finished with the paint, so it costs more. Water absorption In the interlocking bricks, as per IS 2185 part 1 1979, which specifies that interlocking concrete blocks should not absorb more than 10% of the water. In the red bricks, as per IS 3495 part 2 1992, which specifies that bricks should not absorb more than 20% of the water. Curing process for interlocking bricks. Stack the bricks as close as you can prevent the water loss in the bricks. And these should be covered with grass, plastics, 
and used cloths or anything that keep the bricks from the sun. So you can see in the picture these are covered with the plastics. These bricks can be stacked in layers of 5 on the second day. It will save you much space and keep the moisture in blocks. Water the brick every day and the curing process will continue to 28 days but you can use the brick after the 14 days. Next conventional brick and these are not cured, these are burnt in the kilns. After molding and drying, bricks are burnt in kilns to impact hardness, strength and to increase the density of the brick. Some physical and chemical changes take place in the burning of the bricks. Heating bricks to about 640 degrees Celsius produces only physical changes and if you go on increasing the temperature to 700 to 1000 degrees Celsius, it undergoes chemical changes. So, with these chemical changes, the materials present in the brick like alumina and silica fuse together to make the brick stronger and stable to prevent from the cracking and crumbling. So, these are the main differences between the curing processes and few properties what we have discussed. And we will come to the conclusion that why interlocking bricks are better than the conventional bricks. Let us discuss. These are cost saving as cement and sand are not used for the constructing the wall. Interlocking bricks are heat intensive and natural material. So laterite retains coolness inside the house. So interlocking bricks are more cooler than the normal conventional bricks. And these require less labor and more time saving as the interlocking bricks need only to be fitted to each other. So instead of conventional cement motor construction. We discussed some of the advantages and now we discuss about the precautions to be taken while constructing interlocking bricks. It is not advisable to have interlocking bricks in the areas which are prone to get water frequently. So like bathrooms and etc. Apply waterproof finish to the wall to prevent moisture and increase durability. So this is the end of the video. If you like our video, please give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe my channel. Also click the bell icon to receive notifications of our latest videos. See you in the next video. Thank you.